Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. Today I wanted to do a really casual sit down video with you guys and kind of just have a real chat. I wanted to chat with you guys just about being a makeup artist in general. I feel like when you first start out as a makeup artist, the most important decision that you need to make is what niche you want to work in or I guess what field of makeup artistry you want to work in. There's obviously film and television, there's bridal, there's special events, which is like proms. And then there's also, uh, wait, what's the last one? Photo shoots. <laughs> the last one is photo shoots. And I know there's probably small other little niches, but I feel like those are the main ones. In case you guys haven't seen any other videos on my channel before, I kind of just wanted to introduce myself again, I guess. Hi, I'm Julie. I've been a makeup artist for about seven years now. I worked for Ulta for a little bit, and then I went into MAC Cosmetics, worked there for about three years, and then I've been freelancing for three. 2019 was the only year that I actually did film a television. ABC filmed a television show here in Fort Wayne. It was the April Tinsley case. It originated in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in case you guys didn't know. So I followed a television crew around for a week straight. And I also did makeup for a lady at the Journal Gazette, which is a local newspaper. I literally covered up an entire black eye on somebody. That was pretty much my experience with television. It was really fun and all, but they were long, long 12 hour days. I just feel like it was not worth the money that I made for the time that I was putting in. Also, depending on your area, you might not have film and television as an option, just like I really don't. So definitely keep in mind what area that you live in. So if you guys want to obviously work in film and television, you're probably going to have to relocate. As far as like proms and everything, when I worked for Mac, that's like freaking all that we did. <laughs> I've probably done over a hundred prom girls now. That was really fun and all, but I'm not like a super dramatic person when it comes to makeup. So as much as I like every once in a while throwing a really glam look on somebody and using all loose pigments and glitters and everything, that's just not who I am as an artist. I'm mostly like a natural glam sort of person. So that's kind of the makeup that I like to specialize in, which is very bridal. I have a lot of experience doing formals and proms, and that's honestly the work that you guys mostly will probably be doing when you first begin. Usually girls that are going to prom or formals or something like that are in high school, and they don't have a very big budget or their parents are paying for it and don't wanna pay that much. So usually that's the kind of clientele you're gonna get first off. Then obviously as far as photo shoots, I currently do still do photo shoots. I mostly do boudoir sessions. I do family sessions and maternity shoots every once in a while. Usually when you do family shoots, people don't want to get like super glammed up for that. They kind of just want to look like themselves, which I totally understand. If you live in a bigger city like New York or something, then you're probably going to be doing editorial shoots. I've never personally done an editorial shoot before. The closest thing I ever got to it was like a glamour shoot. So I've done it with a photographer in town before that just does like business headshots, glamour shoots, like with all these ball gowns and everything. She loves the catalogs and the magazines and like the pageant world, like that sort of thing. And usually as far as film and television and editorial shoots or photo shoots you're obviously working for that photographer that producer that film writer whatever you're doing and your talent literally hasn't hired you themselves so it's not that big of a deal to them to get their makeup done but then if you go into bridal it's such a big deal. Literally, people will spend months slash years trying to find the perfect bridal makeup artist for themselves. Some people literally do not care, and they're just like, yeah, do whatever, I fully trust you, I hired you for a reason, here you go. But for the people who are super, super picky, and they are out there, by the way, they usually ask you a little bit more questions, they're a little bit more like nitpicky with things, they have a certain look that they want to accomplish, or they might send you a bunch of reference photos. They're gonna hire you for a reason, because they know you're a good artist. That's their one day of their life that they literally get to feel super glam and super amazing. It's one of the happiest days of their life. Sometimes I literally get brides that this is their first time getting makeup professionally done and they're super hyped. That's the reason that I'm a bridal makeup artist. And you just feel like you're so special to them because you're literally making their day. You're making them feel awesome and amazing in the best version of themselves. So now I'm going into the nitty gritty of this video after I rambled for a while. I am primarily a bridal makeup artist, as you guys can probably tell. I wanted to give you guys the more so the realities of being a bridal makeup artist and kind of what it entails. A lot of people, for some odd reason, look down on bridal makeup artists because of the finances and just, I guess, the overall salaries that we have. But to me, it's more so about the hard work that you put in. Not that I'm saying the other areas of makeup artistry aren't hardworking but I just feel like as a bridal makeup artist, we by far do the most. You literally are there from start to finish from when a bride gets engaged and reaches out to you all the way to the very end of their wedding date. Literally, that could be years. I've had brides book with me two years in advance and they're communicating with me the whole entire two years. 
As a bridal makeup artist, you definitely want to make sure you set yourself in the right price range. If you guys haven't seen my bridal makeup artist pricing, I definitely can link that up above here. I did an entirely separate video about that in case you guys have not checked that out. Also, I do have a whole entire business for makeup artists playlist. So every single thing you have about businesses and being a makeup artist and everything, definitely check that playlist out. You want to start lower than other makeup artists in your area. So that means that you have to reach out to other makeup artists in your area. I know a bunch of people on YouTube and on even Instagram too will reach out to me and ask how much they should charge as a bridal makeup artist when they're first starting out. But here's the thing. It's very location specific. So that's why I highly suggest that you ask other makeup artists in your area what they charge and then you'll kind of eventually find like a median then usually when you're a bridal makeup artist you want to develop some sort of i guess signature look if that makes sense i feel like a lot of artists in my area literally have all sorts of looks that they do all the time and yeah you are called to do a whole bunch of things usually but you want to focus in on a certain type of look for instance mine's a natural glam look so i like making people feel like an enhanced version of themselves Yes, I can pull out a vampy lip. Yes, I can pull out more of an editorial look. Yes, I can do a full-blown smoky eye, but that's not the type of thing that I really like doing on people because I really just like amping up people just a tad so you can see the makeup on camera, but it doesn't look like they're having a whole entire cake face situation going on. I also usually gravitate towards a brown champagne sort of look. Um, sometimes I do winged liner, sometimes I don't. Really natural looking lashes, that sort of thing. Definitely can pull out a more glam look if people want to, of course, but usually people hire me for that specific reason. They hire me for my signature looks. So that's what you kind of want to start developing after you've obviously gotten like a really solid base of clientele going. Then you want to specifically kind of just start focusing on that particular style. And that's the only thing eventually that you probably would want to post. For instance, I do a ton of boudoir shoots for photographers in town, and those are all super dramatic, really vampy. And I don't post any of them because that is not what fits my vibe. That's not what I want my portfolio to look like. I don't want people to hire me for that because that's not the type of makeup that I enjoy doing. This will also make your job like 10 times more enjoyable because then you're not going to be doing the makeup that you don't like doing. Then as a bridal makeup artist, as you guys all know, it's very time consuming. <laughs> From that initial inquiry all the way up until the wedding day and even after when you follow up with them, you're literally going to be speaking to tons of brides throughout the year. If you have say 35 weddings or so, you have 35 people that are constantly reaching out to you throughout the year. There's just like a lot to keep track of when it comes to weddings. So that's why I'm really not sure why bridal makeup artists are seen at the bottom of the totem pole because you literally have to do so much work. To be totally honest, um, you can make a pretty decent living off of being a bridal makeup artist. Yes, you do make more as a film and television makeup artist, but um, people in the bridal industry, like weddings is definitely where it's at, like salary wise. You can definitely make yourself in a really successful makeup artist if you try, but it definitely does take effort. You cannot just sit around and watch YouTube videos and hope that you're gonna accomplish everything and your clients are just gonna come to you, you have to advertise yourself. You have to get yourself out there and you have to spread the word, make sure everybody knows in your area that you do makeup and what you specialize in. So when you first start out, I would not even bother doing any paid services. So you don't have to be on the knot, you don't have to be on wedding wire. Literally just use Facebook and Instagram. Instagram has honestly been my number one tool. I don't pay for any bridal services and my business has honestly taken off pretty well. I used to be on Thumbtack, but I feel like I paid way more for that service than I was actually making in bridal clients. I only did that for the first year of being a freelancer and I haven't done it since. So for the last two years, I've literally just been on my own. As long as you guys are regularly posting and doing interactive things on your stories, IGTVs or reels or something, cause reels are really popular right now, you're definitely going to get a pretty good following and then your name will slowly kind of get out there. Then also this business takes an emotional toll on you after a while. And I kind of wasn't prepared for this and I feel like nobody talks about it. So when you first get into the bridal industry, obviously you're slowly building up your clientele. You may not have a lot. So unless you have a significant other that makes like buku bucks and you do not have to work for a living and you can just do makeup artistry on the side, you're lucky by the way, if that's your situation, <laughs> you have to either maintain some sort of full-time job or part-time job or something with makeup artistry. So then you're balancing multiple jobs at one time. And it's honestly really hard. I'm gonna say that right now. It's a very, very hard thing to maintain and it heavily tolls on personal relationships. And I know I don't really need to say this, but obviously the more time that you work, the less time you're gonna have for your kids or your husband or spouse or whoever. And it's just very, tiring after a while and it might start to affect your personal relationships 
you might start missing things that your kids do because you have to work on weekends and then you're doing a full-time job during the week. It's just like, you're, there's just not enough time in the day to do things. And then you're obviously doing back-end accounting sort of things all the time. And luckily my husband's extremely understanding about it. So we don't really have any conflicts going on, but there is times though where I'll purposely take a weekend off to just like not work any weddings or anything just so we can maintain our personal relationship. Because I don't want to ever have it come to a point where my job ever means more than my relationship with my husband. Right now we don't have kids in the picture, but if we ever do, obviously I'll probably be cutting down significantly on the amount of weddings that I take for a year because I don't want to have my life consumed with weddings and missing out on like the first steps or the first haircut or my baby's first word or something like that just because I'm working. You have to have that nice fine like life balance as opposed to a work balance and it's just sometimes very complicated to try to maintain. So just keep in mind, if you guys do go into this field and you go into bridal especially, you will be working like almost every single weekend if your business takes off. And it's just a lot of time spent away from your family. If family is literally the top priority on your list, I would not choose this field. You can choose probably like another segment of makeup. Like you can probably go into film and television. Um, they usually don't film on weekends. They usually go during the week, but definitely bridal is probably not the area makeup artistry for you. Sorry to um, leave off on a, like a somewhat depressing note. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this little chat. Hit that big thumbs up button if you guys did like the video. And also, if you really do love makeup artist vlogs and just makeup artist content, definitely subscribe to my channel. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.